topic of today is perfect format of a research paper. So after you research, actually, after you document the things, sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to uh, difficult for us to pin down that how very well we can write a research paper which can be accepted at one go for publication because ultimately when we do a research our main aim is to go for publication in a proper journal so how to write it in proper format so that it can go to the proper journal it can be published without any hassle in a proper journal generally speaking we have got 10 points which we have to remember which we have to write if you are looking for quality in a research paper you know i always say the synonym of research is quality you know you have to quantity is not the point in research at all your research paper should be very very quality conscious so if you want to produce a qualitative research paper you should remember a star you can see on my screen a star with 10 tips if we remember this 10 tips I am sure each and every one present in this webinar today will definitely come out with an excellent research paper so what are those 10 tips we have to remember if we have to write a good research paper number one it should be title and abstract definitely a research paper should have an abstract and it should have a title without a title it is not a, a not a research paper at all so it should have a title and an abstract number two it should have introduction and conceptual background number three number three Number three, it will be a problem statement. Whenever you're doing a research, there should be some problem. If there is no problem, there is no point of doing a research. Because why are we doing a research? We are doing a research to come out with a solution. And when can we find a solution? Whenever there is a problem. So every research paper, however small it is, should have a problem so that we can solve by our research. Point number four, every research paper should have research objectives. Two, make your research objectives much more stronger. To put a base on the research objective, you should have research questions, if not hypothesis. Now, whether it will be a research question or it will be hypothesis will depend upon the nature of the research paper which you are writing. Point number five, review of literature, a must in any research paper. Number six, research methodology. The methodology which you have used to do your research should be very clearly put forward in your research paper. A research paper's main characteristics is uniqueness. Your research paper should be innovative in nature. Maybe whenever you're writing a research paper, you write two lines on your innovativeness. But do write. And how to write, I will tell you in the later part of my presentation. Number eight, implication or relevance of the proposed study. That is a solution that what uh, what is the implication of your research to the society what is the implication of your research to the uh, to the uh, to the policy uh, to, uh, for policy making okay so what is the importance of your research paper that is what i mean to say number 9 a master's references and number 10 which is newly added nowadays is plagiarism which is a must so these 10 tips of a star if you remember your research paper will really be sparkling like a star in a black sky so let us find out what are these 10 points how can we understand these 10 points to make your research paper unique number one i will start with title how should <coughs> excuse me 
what should be the way by which you can find out a appropriate title for your research paper always remember at least for me after doing research for so many years i always feel that writing a research paper is easier but finding an appropriate title is very very challenging in nature remember three things when you decide on the title of the research paper it has to be brief at the same time very very clear and meaningful you should never ever write a title or select a title which does not have any meaning you have to remember that you are doing the research you know what is there in the research paper but the other person opposite to you does not know anything about your research paper your title should be so clear it should be so meaningful that at least the other person can get an idea about your research paper so obviously choosing the title is very very challenging it should be a very very catchy title now again it is not a movie and it will be very very impressive title but definitely it should be a catchy title always remember the title of the research paper should not exceed 15 words it is a rule of research it is a 15 words minimum because longer the title more confusing it becomes to the other person the title of a research should be so meaningful i always say to my research students that the title is a mini abstract by looking at the title you can understand the essence of the research paper by looking at the title you as if you know the title is a brush which is painting a picture in your mind about your research paper at the same time the research paper title should be using very very simple words do not use the words which other people do not understand my basic uh, my basic uh, subject is geography now if i start using technical terms of geography maybe only geographers will understand but what is my aim my research paper should reach to the maximum my research paper the solution which i have provided should be beneficial to the maximum so i just can't say that it will be read only by the geographers today we are living in the age of multidisciplinary aspect so your paper should be read by so many people who belong to other other fraternity as well that is why always use very very simple words no use of jargons so that it is easy to remember whenever you select a research a title always read it again and again remember the title of your research paper is read the most so if you remember all these points when selecting the title of a research paper definitely definitely it will be a very uh, you will definitely come out with a very meaningful title let us understand this with some examples take for example you know in uh, in america in a red haired musicians are very very common and they are very well sorted so i can choose so let me think that i am doing a research on red haired musicians okay so i put a title right like this red haired musicians and their preferences for musical style i write it in different way the same thing music style preference of red haired musicians my dear uh, part, the, the the participants you use if you read both the titles properly it is the same thing the meaning is the same but title 1 is much more longer than title 2 if i ask you one by one 
I am sure 99% of the participants will say that Title II is much more, uh, much more catchy than Title I. I also have the same feeling. Since we are on online mode, I'm not able to reach you one by one, but I am sure all of you are thinking in the same lines as I am doing. Title two is much more better than title one. So whenever you write a title of your research paper, write it down and then read it again and again, you automatically will come out to a conclusion where you can decide the best title for your research paper. Some more examples. I have a title called African Politics, but when I read it, I find something is missing. African politics? What, what to study about African politics? African politics is such a huge topic. What are specifically are you studying in African politics? That I have not mentioned. So you see, I said that your title should be short but that does not mean it should be so short that others do not understand what are you researching on. I said that it should be meaningful at the same time short. So choose lesser words, but meaningful words so that people can understand what I, is your research about. Sometimes you use the same words in the title. See title number two, a study to investigate the education level of dash, 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 dash. Why are you using or why am I using two words, study and investigate? I can just write simply a study to understand or a study about education level of dash 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 or to investigate the education level of dash 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 you see this manner you can make the title shorter impressive and interesting so your title should be instant it should be impressive and you know it should tell something about the research paper i think enough we have discussed about the title but still I would like to give some points on how, what you should remember when making a title. It should never be overly descriptive. If you describe everything in a title, what are you going to write in your paper, in your research paper? <clears throat> you are not writing or using fancy words. It should not be more than 15 words, not brainstorming titles. That means you should not write, uh, choose such a title where the people from the other side has to really think upon. You should not do such type of titles. Choose a title which is very, very sim simple. And sometimes you, know, you get funded for the research paper you're writing. So whenever you're getting, <clears throat> excuse me. Whenever you're getting funded, for a research paper you're writing, always uh, try to see what are your sponsor's ideas and accordingly frame a title. I myself, when I make a research paper, I never decide the title beforehand. I start with a working title. When I finish the research paper, I come back to the title again and then finalize it because I want to make my title very, very impressive. I want to make a title in such a manner so that it can capture the attention of the maximum. I make my title in such a manner so that other becomes curious and they're eager to read my research paper. I make my title in such a manner so that they get a general idea about uh, a general idea about the research paper you are writing. You are writing. So always remember the title which you are choosing should be very, very memorable, but at the same time, very, very simple. So my dear participants, we have enough about choosing a title. I am sure every one of you must be thinking what should be the title of your research paper now. 
when you start a research paper, you just don't start it as it is. You have to write an abstract. That means condense whatever you have written about the in a research paper. The general rule is that it should be 10% of the research length of the research paper. So if your research paper is of 2000 words, you should write your abstract of 200 words. That is the rule it, it, according to the international law. So in, and in the abstract, you should have everything. Whatever you have written in the research paper, everything should be contained in the abstract. In the abstract, you should always write about the subject area. I'm writing geography, write the subject area, write the objectives of your research paper, write the methodology which you have taken from the research paper, write down the results and their significance, write down what resources have, is, have you used. Generally, uh, abstract always has to be written at the end. Keep space and write it at the end because unless and until you finish the full paper, you will not be able to write about the results, the, the recommendation, the significance. You know, you're not able to write that. I will give you an example when we are start, when when we will be discussing more about abstract. So abstract should always be written at the end. Abstract should always be written in third person. Abstract should always be passive. Remember, abstract is the first and the last impression. Many a times when you are giving your paper for your uh, publication, the publication houses or the conference leaders, the all the first thing they read your abstract. If the abstract is an interesting one, important one they go for the research paper so uh, be very very careful when you know in fact every point in research is important but still i can say that title and abstract should be dealt with care it should be dealt with such a care so that it gives the full idea about the research take for example my research paper is named A Hidden Challenges of Women on Streets, a Neglected Issue. Okay, this I'm writing the abstract. So what have I included in the abstract? First two lines, just an introduction. Then I've written the objectives. You have to write about the objectives like this. Then I've written about the methodology. Don't write the full methodology. For that, there is a different paragraph allotted. Just write two lines on methodology. Write about the sample size. Then write about the analysis. That is the result. What is the result? And then write the introduction. So you should be very, you should know how to write an abstract. So what? how do you have to write? First two lines should be general idea, come to objectives, comes to methodology, come to sample size, come to analysis and then with recommendation complete your uh, complete your abstract and at the end write down the key words the main words many a times we will find the conf in the conferences they say that if you don't finish the paper finish uh, send us the abstract till today i fail to understand that if you do not complete a research paper, how will you complete uh, the abstract? Without completing the research paper, you can never ever write a proper abstract. Because if you have not completed the research paper, that means you have not decided the methodology. That means you have uh, you have you do not know the sample size. That means you have not done the analysis. And if you have not done the analysis, how have you come to the conclusion? If you do not come to the conclusion, how will you do the recommendation? So everything is just lacking behind. So remember, I tell this again and again: two lines of the subject area or introduction, objectives methodology, sample size, analysis, recommendation, end with keywords. Your abstract will be a perfect one. So my friends, we have finished with title and abstract. Now I am coming to the real part of the research paper. When I come into the real part of the research paper,
research paper, the first thing which I have to remember is to write an introduction. With the introduction, I will write about the conceptual background. I will explain what is a conceptual background and how we can include conceptual background in introduction. Now, what is introduction? Introduction is the gentle beginning. It is not a beginning of the research paper. You have hardly started your research. It is just a gentle beginning. Introduction should start in such a manner as if you, you are introducing the title to the audience. It gives you the background of the study. Explain in the introduction, why is it essential to study this topic? You know, if something is not essential, there is no point to doing a research. So always explain why it is essential to study the topic. Always write the introduction in a, in a third person as if an outsider is looking into it. You should make the introduction so interesting as if, you know, it is just like the title, uh, 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 it is just like, a, uh, what to say, uh, um, uh, it's a, 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 the beginning part of a movie. You know, if the beginning part of the movie is interesting, people have the interest, you know, uh, to, uh, to read, to see the full movie. It is just like that. So if your introduction, if the trailer is of a movie is not interesting, no one will go and watch a movie. So this is just like a trailer. So as if you're preparing the readers to uh, start to take, you're taking them to the journey of research. So always remember in our introduction to give the background of the study and always explain that why is it essential to study the topic. Sometimes, you know, we use many theories in our research paper. So whenever you're studying, when you're writing a research paper or you're using a, a theory, you should always explain why you're using the theory. It is not necessary in every research paper there should be a uh, there should be a use of theory. But in some research papers, especially in science, there is a tendency of using theories in your research paper. So whenever you're doing this in the introduction, please add conceptual framework. That means what you are explaining why you're using the theory a particular theory in your research paper. You can even write down the conceptual framework or you can even present your conceptual framework in a form of a diagram or in the form of a mental map or in a form of a flow chart that depends upon your subject. But please do write down that why you're using a particular theory. This is essential whenever you're using a theory, otherwise not. So my friends, we know about the title, the project title or a research paper title, whatever. We know how to write the abstract, although the abstract will be written at the later part when we finish our research paper. We, when we started our research paper, we just wrote the introduction. If you are using a theory, please tell your readers why are you right, using that theory? Give the reason that is known as the conceptual background. My next point in a research paper should be the problem statement. As I've said earlier, whenever there is a problem, there is a research. If there is no problem, there is no point of giving a research. Let us understand how will you write the problem. The problem, I say, just like introduction, I said, is a gentle beginning. The problem is what I call the core of research. That means if a problem is not there, research only is not there. So problem becomes the core of research. The problem tells me why are we doing the research? why this research is needed and if you're getting the funds why it should be funded you know there should always be a problem again and i'm saying to solve that problem take for example 
uh, take for example, Mumbai is famous for slums, you know. So I, uh, I see that every time during the rainy season, the slum dwellers, the slum dwellers, the slum, the slum dwellers are always uh, facing the problem of waterborne diseases. So uh, whenever I visit I, or I go nearby to the slums, I see there are a lot of untreated sewages. So I find out, I think that maybe the untreated sewage is the cause of the waterborne diseases among the slum dwellers. Don't you feel, my dear participants, that this is a problem? This is a problem, the problem of untreated sewage. Don't you feel whenever there is a problem, we should find out a solution? You should find out why the sewage is untreated, why the sewage is not cleaned. If the sewage is cleaned, there will be no waterborne diseases among the slum dwellers. So to find out the answer to this why, what you have to do, you will have to do a research. So this is a problem. What is a problem? Untreated sewage is a problem. This is just an example which I cited. A problem has to be found out. This is the most excellent section of a proposal. When you really have a problem, you really know what are you researching on. Many a times, my many students even ask me, Madam, where do I find a problem? Now look at it. Our, our life is full of problems. And you are asking me, where do we find a problem? If you're a science student, you can find a problem in your theories, what you're doing. You know, sometimes experiments which are doing, we sometimes think, why we are doing it in this manner? Why not in that manner? That itself is a problem. If you belong to social science, if you belong to management studies, you can always study about day-to-day -day problems. You can study about the issues, the concerns. You can study about, you know, if you are from science faculty, you can study about innovations in technology. So you see, you should look around, look around you. Think with your subject, you will find ample problems are there around any human being. And you can pick up any problem of your choice and start researching. But problem is the core of a research. You should have a problem to do a research on. Take for example, I was trying to research, you know, Mumbai, everyone knows Mumbai is an overly overcrowded city. Okay, and there is a tendency of a development of, of, of suburbs as the population grows. Now, so how is the suburbs growing? We are encroaching upon all the agricultural land outside the city and converting them into urban areas, isn't it? So you see, I have taken a small area uh, in, in the Raigad. Raigad is a district in Maharashtra. And I found that in the northern part of Raigad, there were huge amount of forest. How did I find out? I searched it on the website. That, and, the, and the census also, the statistics showed that there were huge amount of forest maybe 20 years back. And now what is happening? Population is increasing in that area and the forest is being cleared and uh, uh, to set up houses and other facilities. Don't you feel this is a problem? Definitely, on environmental viewpoint, this is a problem. So I've started researching that how we can solve this problem of overpopulation and we can safeguard the forest. So what I mean to say is that always try to find out a problem and try to find out a solution and that your research paper becomes a living example, living research paper. Your research should be of help to somebody else. So when you really find out the solution of a problem, it becomes a help to somebody else. So as I'm mentioning, where to find a good topic? You can find a good topic by brainstorming when you're talking to people or you're can searching in the internet or reference book or reading scholarly journals, reading current events. Me, myself as a researcher, I always feel it is my day-to-day -day experience which gives me the problems.
topics and I feel that I should research on. Whenever I feel I should research on, I share it with my students. And if not me, my students research on that. So always try to find out a, a problem for which solution is needed. Just don't start writing a research paper for the sake of writing a research paper. So my friends, I have found out the title. I have kept space for abstract. I know how to write the introduction. If I've used any theory, I have used it in, uh, I have used it, uh, I have used it in uh, this one, conceptual background. I have even found out the problem and I know this is the problem I should be dealing with. You know, only writing the problem in a paragraph is not enough. You should write it point wise. So that becomes your research objectives. At the end of the paper, you know, these are the research objectives which you have to, uh, which you have to solve. So how will you write the uh, research objectives? I call research objectives as aims to satisfy. So if you have noticed my PPT very well, introduction becomes the uh, gentle beginning. Your problem becomes the core of study and the objectives becomes the aims to satisfy. How will you get the objectives from the problem? So, should not include what is really done. If others have already done, don't do that. That is not a research. What you're doing to do in future. Never be, never, never write like this. To study, to investigate. Don't, they're very old fashioned now. This We should be trendy in our research also. You can always write to determine, to develop. To solve, you are trying to solve a problem. A problem is a very important aspect of a research. So write to solve. Whenever you're writing the objectives, you know, it should be very, very logical. Give me a second, please. <clears throat> Give me a second, please. It should be very, sorry, I'm back. It should be very, very logical. It should be very, very important and specific. Objectives, neither it should be too many, not too less. It should not be as many as 10, 12, 13. No, no, no. But it should not be too less as one also. In a research paper, two to three objectives are fine. For a project, four to five objectives are fine. When you're writing an a, a objective, it should neither be too big sentence nor a very small sentence. You should write the objectives in such a manner so that they're achievable, they're measurable. At the end of the research paper, you can say that this was my objective. And for this objective, I have found out this solution. This is the measurable solution. This is achievable solution. So you should be very, very specific when you're writing the objectives. So we have written, we know the uh, title, we have kept space for abstract, we, we know the introduction, conceptual for, uh, background if required, problem statement and uh, research objectives. Now, uh, depending upon the research paper, you will be deciding whether you need a research question or you need a research hypothesis. What is a hypothesis? What is a good hypothesis? Explain what is expected to occur. Hypothesis always, you know, we write uh, in an opposite manner. One, uh, one. Um, I will come to it later on. Uh, two sentences should be there opposite to each other. So one you accept and the other you reject. So hypothesis, whenever you are writing, it should be very clear and understandable. It should be testable because unless and until they're testable and measurable, you cannot say that one uh, hype. Excuse me, I have a very bad throat. 
you cannot say that one is uh, uh, you're ac ac accepting one and you are uh, rejecting the other. So they should be testable and measurable. Whenever you're writing a hypothesis, there should be an independent variable and a dependent variable. You know, I find whenever we are doing research or I'm looking into research papers, there is a great confusion between independent and dependent variables. So what are these independent and dependent variables? You know, and moreover, we have a trouble in remembering that which one is an independent variable and which one is a dependent variable. Take, for example, I write, time spent studying causes a change in test score. So we see that time spent studying must be independent variable and test score must be dependent variable. Why? If you spend more time for studying, your test score improves. If you spend less time for studying, your test score also falls. So the test score is depending upon the times with the time which you are spending for studying. So there should be independent variable and there should be dependent variable. So always remember in this manner. We can also say independent variable is the cause and dependent variable is the effect. Time spent studying was more, test score was more. Time spent studying was less, test score is also less. So as my independent variable is changing, my dependent variable is also changing. Another example, do tomatoes grow fastest under fluorescent? Or natural light. Which one is the independent variable? Type of light is the independent variable. And which one is a dependent variable? Growth of tomato. You can easily check that in under fluorescent light, tomatoes are growing better, or natural light, but tomatoes are growing better. So independent variable is a type of light, and dependent variable is the growth of tomatoes. Always check your hypothesis in this manner. We generally have null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. When there is no significant relationship between the two variables, it is called null hypothesis. And where there is a significant relationship between two variables, it is called an alternate hypothesis. So you write your hypothesis in which this manner. Point number five, which I come to for a research paper is a review of literature. Unless and until you know that the research paper, the topic of the research paper which you are dealing with, how others have dealt, you can never uh, write a good research paper. Moreover, <clears throat> whenever you write a research paper, you should also find out whether others have done any work in, your, in the same area or not. If others have done the work, there is no point of you to do the work again. When others have not done, you should do. That is called research. You know, so you should find out the gap. Unless and until you identify the gap, you cannot do a good research paper. So how will you find out the gap? You will have to do a survey. What type of survey? It is called a literature survey where you have to find out whether anyone else have already studied about your research topic or not. It is very, very time consuming, definitely very time consuming to find out. But at the same time, it is very, very rewarding because unless and until you know that what is the gap which is existing in the research which you are researching on, your research will never be good. Because in a research paper, always try to find out something new. So how will you find out something new when you know others have not worked on it? So literature review is a very, very important point in a research paper. Uh, uh, when you come, when you do a proper literature review, when you find out who else have studied, you know, this helps you to keep you updated. This helps you to get a background of the study of the research you are doing. 
and it becomes a very very handy guide and moreover it increases your credibility also you know you generally because you know that you are sure that others have not worked on this topic and you are doing it so definitely your credibility increases whenever you are find conducting a research review or literature review do not uh, start finding out from the whole topic try to find out the keywords from your topic take for example you are studying on anxiety if you keep on searching what are the researches on anxiety you know it will be never ending job find out the specific part which part of anxiety you are studying about maybe social anxiety even in social anxiety also it becomes a huge thing so find out what is a specific thing in social anxiety you need impact of social anxiety on the learning of the students so try to find out from these narrow topic it is just as from a from a huge cake you are taking out a slice of cake you know try to find out the keywords and search and and search that what are the researchers have taken place here but where to search you can search in the books you can search in the journals you can search in the newspaper articles historical records thesis but never ever search in the wikipedia wikipedia is not an acceptable source as i said you can search in the books books are very very authentic nowadays e books are also available you can go to the library and see the books so you can search in the books you can search the articles in the journals you can start uh, there are many world wide networks you know which deal with academic books they link you with the libraries in different part of the world you can always you can always search there google scholar many of us you know do not use google scholar even my students they don't know about google scholar you know google scholar is not a, a web content google scholar is a subset of a google web search so in the google scholar if you go and you type down the keywords of your research you get so many journals so many research papers dealing with that so you know google scholar is a very very good option so uh, i mean to say whenever you do a literature review uh, for a research paper mix up the sources you know some articles you find from the book something you find from the newspaper something it can, even from films you can find out something from the magazine but you have to do a literature search you have to see who has studied about your research paper whenever you are doing this type of research searches na write it down that who has studied about what aspect writing a uh, in in a research paper when you are writing the point of literature review please do not write in one go but always write in three paragraphs write the introduction then write the body who has studied about the research area which you are researching on and then write the conclusion these are some of the points which we have to remember while writing a literature review that never use uh, uh, never uh, never use the word i i think you should never use it like this i think i believe in my opinion uh, uh, you should try to write in third uh, in third uh, um, uh, third person whenever you are writing a literature review whenever you are doing a literature review survey try to find out the gap as i said take for example i am studying about the uh, the traffic problem in greater mumbai i find out that there are many people who have studied about traffic problems in delhi in asansol in gwalior but no one has studied about the traffic problem in greater mumbai so greater this uh, whenever i am researching on greater mumbai and that becomes that is a gap in the study and i'm trying to fulfill the gap so i can easily research on the traffic problems in greater mumbai because no one else have studied when no one else studies it it becomes unique it becomes new so you should always deal with a new point so friends we know the title we know the abstract we know the introduction we know the conceptual background we know the problem statement 
we from the problem statement we have written the research objectives after writing the research objectives we have written the research question we have done the hypothesis even review of literature we have written we have found out that who else have studied about the research point from the literature review or review of literature we have found out the gap which is existing in the research paper now comes the most important point that is the research methodology in research methodology what are the points you should be covering coverage what is the study area data sources from where are you getting the secondary data data collection details about the primary study from where are you getting the primary study data analysis how whatever data you have received from secondary point from primary point how are you doing the analysis which softwares are you using for uh, analysis so this four things should be there coverage data source that means from where are you getting the secondary data data collection how are you doing the primary study uh, primary data collection and then the data analysis what softwares are you using for data analysis see suppose i'm studying about greater mumbai i will i will say in the world india in india maharashtra in maharashtra greater mumbai and then i will make the full map the greater mumbai wards that is the area of study so the readers are becoming clear that this is the area of studying data sources as i said secondary data and primary data you should give a detailed description of the sources from what type of secondary data you're getting from where and how you're doing the primary data collection so friends we know the title we have not written the abstract we have written the introduction if conceptual background is required we have written we have to find out a problem without that research paper cannot be done from the problem we have written the research objectives and points if needed write the research question and hypothesis literature review is compulsory after literature review you have to do the research methodology every research paper is innovative in nature it is very important to be innovative you see i have showed you that about traffic congestion in so many other cities it is studied but in mumbai it is not studied don't you feel if i can study about mumbai that becomes something new whenever you take you talk of something new in a that becomes a research that becomes an innovation so if not in detail at least two points you add in your research paper how innovative what type of innovation you know nowadays ugc also talks about innovation so innovation has to be written at least in two lines in your research paper what is innovation here i mean what something new you have done in research paper which others have not done after innovation you should also mention about the implication and the relevance of the proposed study if your research paper has got no solution no implication it is not a research paper at all so always try to write down in short the impact of your research how will you help to improve the society how will you help the policy makers at what level of administration you know this can be included even in your conclusion when you are writing the when you are writing the conclusion that is uh, what have you what have you achieved in your research paper you know what type of recommendation you give there also you can write down about the implication on the society and the policy makers so friends we have done we have almost come with the in implication only is the solution we have almost come at the end of the research paper but we should not forget to write about the reference whenever we are writing a reference always remember there are different styles follow any one style which is suitable to your subject and follow it throughout references form a very important part of a research paper without references you will have an incomplete research paper so any style you pick up and you do the referencing of your research paper it can be apa it can be mla different styles are written in different manner and you have to conclude the research paper
I have completed my research paper. Now I can easily write down the abstract of the research paper because <clears throat> I know the conclusion. Through research methodology, I have completed my analysis. And from the analysis, I, have, I've, I know the conclusion. And in the conclusion, I have added the implication and the relevance of the proposed study. So the abstract you can easily write down now. Your abstract writing will be much more easier. You have also written the references. Now it is the time you can give your paper for, for, uh, for publication. But completion of the paper and a publication of the paper in between, you have to do a check that is known as a plagiarism check. Plagiarism is something whether you have taken some ideas from somebody else or not. Research is something, I, as I said, it should be something of your own. You just cannot copy from somebody else's research paper and call it your research paper. So this plagiarism check has to be done. UGC says that anything above 10% is not acceptable. You know, no one will put you behind bars if it is more than 10%, but it is an academic reputation. Whenever your plagiarism is more, you lose your academic reputation. And in research, this academic reputation is very, very valuable. So plagiarism is just a way of checking the originality of your ideas, whether the research paper which you have written are original or not. So you have to get your plagiarism test done for all your research papers. In the research paper, always remember, you have to be very, very original. As I said, whenever uh, you're copying something, it is, it is not it is not a criminal crime, you know, but it is definitely very, very unethical. And anything unethical is not accepted in research. So what are the points we should remember when we are writing a research paper? It should always be concise, crips and original. Look into the language and grammar. Formatting, generally it is written in Times New Roman. Font size should be 12, body 14 headings. Line spacing should be 1.5. Margin should be 2 on the left and 1.5 on the other sides. This is the general uh, format which we generally adopt for a research paper. So your research paper, as I said, should be very, very original. You put in your labor and you write down a research paper and then somebody says your research paper is not original. Your rationale is weak. Your writing is vague. It's very uncertain. Whatever you have said is very uncertain. You do not like that, isn't it? Somebody says your problem is not important. Your research paper has got no focus. So always remember the 10 tips of writing a research paper. You will never ever face such problems which are very much there in my screen now. So friends, we all know the 10 points of a research paper now. Title, abstract. Introduction, conceptual framework. Problem, from the problem, research objective. If needed, research question and hypothesis. Review of literature, a compulsory thing. Research methodology, from research methodology, if you do it properly, if you follow the methodology, you come to the conclusion where you get where you get the uh, what have you achieved of your research paper. Add innovativeness, add implication in the conclusion. Write the reference. After that, give it for plagiarism testing. Your paper is ready for publication now. You are ready to dive in in the world of research. At the end note, I wish you good luck for the preparation of our research paper. I'm grateful for giving me an opportunity again. Thank you.